Coming up on the FRC Open Alliance Show, 6328 Mechanical Advantage, who's been on Einstein three years in a row now, is back with their phenomenal start to this Reefscape season. We'll be going through all the different types of prototypes you're doing, from Coral and LG as well, too, showcasing what those look like, talking about some of their objectives and strategies, and also diving a bit more into, of course, some of their awesome vision tools you're doing, from their camera analysis tool to their camera placements, LG tracking, simulated elevator, and so much more. So let's hop in to the Open Alliance Show with 6328. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. Go ad free and access our videos earlier when you support fun with a membership through YouTube Join. For $4.99 a month USD, you can now watch most of our YouTube videos ad-free and gain early access to scheduled content with other options also available. Click the Join button below to get started. And let's welcome back in one of our huge premier teams on the Open Alliance. It's 6328 Mechanical Advantage coming in from Massachusetts. Three years in a row they have won their division, and we're so excited to speak with them once again. On there, By the way, uh, this uh, past year was with, was with another Open Alliance team, 4481, who we'll have on later on as well, too. So, Guys, congratulations on a fantastic season last year. Coming in this year, I've been following along your blog. So many great things as well, too. If you don't mind, can you introduce yourselves? And let's hop right into everything great you got going on. Thank you. Uh, I'm Matthew. I'm the CAD lead. Uh, I'm Advaith. I'm the strategy lead. I'm Surya. I'm the software lead. All right. Um, so I guess to dive in, uh, this week, after figuring out our priorities for the season, uh, what kind of tasks we wanted to complete, uh, our team divided into groups to tackle various prototypes, mainly focusing on how to pick up, index, and score both game pieces, the algae and coral. Uh, and all of our uh, prototypes have gone through sev several revisions by this point, and so we're just going to go through a couple of those. So our first one is the algae manipulator. Uh, Manipulating the algae and holding in the robot was a huge priority for us. So we were inspired initially by an RR3D video where it kind of pinched and rolled in the algae. So we made this quickly out of little cut wood, just some belts and gears. So after this, we uh, ran to a, a quick failure because uh, the, there was a lot of stress rolling up the algae. So um, from there, we adjusted the spacing and eventually moved down the polycarb. Uh, there's a lot of torque in the system, so we encountered issues with belts skipping and belts running out with the hex bores. So we had to bump up and increase our, our pulley diameter, but after all that, uh, it still didn't really work that well. It, it's really hard to get that roll of the, the, the algae to pinch into the, the end effector like we would like, like to, but uh, it's a good prototype and we learned a lot from it. Okay, so now for the uh, slap down ground intake for the algae. Uh, this prototype is heavily inspired by 1323's 2023 intake for the cubes, uh, where it's just a single, like, simple pivot for the intake. Um, and the idea with this was that we could pick up the algae from the ground, uh, kind of keep it stowed in our robot against the bumper, and then also when we don't have an algae in our robot, we can stow it in a way that it uh, funnels into our serializer for the coral, so it's easier to drop in the coral at the... Um, human player station, uh, which we'll show later once we get to that prototype. Uh, so yeah, today we went through a revision where we mounted it to our dev bot, which we'll also talk about later. Um, yeah. So our next uh, prototype, a huge priority for us was being able to control and index the irregularly shaped coral. So we were inspired by uh, yet another RI3D team with a um, entrapment star indexer. So this takes that the coral and gets into a single file thing that we can feed into our end effector. So we did a lot of testing with this and trying to figure out the um, the optimal arrangement of belts and wheels and uh, entrapment stars. And eventually we simplified it down to just some belts, allowing us to easily uh, feed in the, the coral and then get into that single index path. So we, we played around a lot with like the angle and the, the wheel configurations, but uh, we figured out eventually the simplest was probably the best with the belts. 
and then that would feed into our iron defector. Um, so our, our end defector was basically heavily based on a pass-through system, so we can control the coral from the indexer and then pass through our elevator to score uh, on the reef uh, very quickly because we think the cycle times will be very fast. And one of the biggest limiting factors to those cycle times will be not driving, but the ability to get our coral from the human loading station to in a position where we can score. Um, so our first version of this prototype was very simple with just a couple of two by four and height blocks. Uh, and then we mounted the system to a hard mount and uh, tested a bunch of different angles. Um, and we found that it would score pretty consistently at 45 degrees uh, in like L2, but it was struggling at like L4 because the degree, the angle of the, of the peg was higher. Um, so we're going through some more revisions of that. Um, so we made a more robust version uh, very recently that we're still testing right now that uh, adjusts the angle um, better. Um, we also had a lot of success last year with our dev bot. Uh, so we immediately decided to jump into building the chassis for that um, when the season started so we could get some initial prototypes on there. Uh, like you saw in the video earlier, the slap down intake we tested on the DevVot chassis. Um, and as we get more and more uh, developed prototypes, we'll start mounting those on and testing our subsystems uh, in a more integrated sense. So guys, before we go into, uh, you know, like all the awesome stuff you do with programming, you know, every team we talk to is like Advantage Scope, Advantage Scope, right? They're all using it and it's super cool. I want to talk about um, stepping back in when you were approaching on kickoff and the few days in, is your team looking at doing everything? You know, like where do you set your priorities for things in, in, from in terms of accomplishing game objectives, that sort of thing? Where does that all fall for mechanical advantage this year? Um, so we are thinking about the role we want to play at the events we go to uh, the whole year. And so just thinking about ways we can uh, be reliable and consistent, we found that that was a super important factor to our success last year. So we want to find uh, ways we can prioritize our subsystems to be super consistent throughout the year and make sure that we're peaking by champs uh, if we get there, hopefully, uh, and we're not peaking too early and struggling through the rest of the year. Um, so we want to make sure we're not selling ourselves short in terms of the goals we're setting, um, but we're allowing ourselves to have a lot of possibilities later in the year. Um, so, yeah. And you guys are competing in week one and week four, right? So. Is there kind of these like milestones you're looking at hitting, you know, by the time you hit week one and then, you know, you got that three week gap up into week four, do those milestones kind of change for you a little bit as you're going between each competition? Uh, yeah, I'd say we, um, we aren't looking at major uh, robot redesigns as much as we are uh, looking to really get like our driver practice styled in throughout those weeks, uh, things like our autos and like driver assist systems. Uh, those things we can fine tune in, in that time and make it so we're able to compete at a higher level uh, each time we go to a next, our next competition. So we saw a lot of great stuff from your prototyping standpoint on it. Um, love to hear more about what you're doing from a software side of things and how you're approaching all that this year. Yeah, so coming into the 2025 season, what we really wanted to focus on was strategizing like the placement of our cameras because last year we didn't feel like we kind of lacked or we kind of didn't take you know, we weren't proactive in actually figuring out where we should place our cameras. And so if we go open up picture nine, um, uh, the first week we did do a, like a little test of, you know, if we're doing like, I guess on the left side, you can see like, we ran like a couple example cycles in Corio, And then we, we wrote like a script to basically where we're seeing the most tags. And we can see like on the front of the robot, as we're heading towards the reef, we're seeing the most tags. And so just stuff like that, we're trying to do and figure out where we should put our cameras to be the most, to get the most accurate data. And so let's go to picture 10. Uh, here's a quick brainstorm we did to show where we could possibly have cameras. And I think it's important to note that uh, the reef scoring is going to be very quick. We assumed we're, we're predicting that the reef cycles are going to be pretty quick this year. And so, when have, so having that software, you know, automation to kind of go to any place we want automatically and do it really quickly, that was like our go-to goal this season. And so what we try to, what we figured we would do is actually have two cameras and always make sure that we have like two cameras looking at the reef tags when we're scoring. And as well as that, if we want to automate pickup, we want a camera on the back and uh, 
with picking up algae this year, we also want another camera for possibly doing game piece detection. Um, so if we want to go to video 11, we can show what we're doing with that right now. Um, yeah, so we, we want this game piece detection just because like last year, we didn't really focus that on that too much. And we did find that other teams were having success with that. And, you know, we thought we could also do the same. So here's a quick video we did on our laptop, just showing how the, the model runs. I think the soft times are almost down to 15 milliseconds or so. So that'd be pretty fast. Um, yeah. So as well as that, we are also doing autos or we're, we're simulating our autos and seeing what we can, can get going. So I think photo 11 is all we can have for now, but, um, so with DevBot coming together, we can, uh, software finally has like a task or a time finally has like a, a clear cut thing that we need to do. And so just using like our design of DevBot, we try try to make autos for that. What do some of your timelines look like, you know, going into the next few weeks on here? What are some major milestones during the actual like build season, quote unquote, that you want to get done? And when are, when are those going to take place for mechanical advantage? Um, we don't have very set in stone milestones in terms of like, sometimes you see teams saying, oh, in two weeks, we need to have our CAD completely finished and we need to be like at this point. Um, we don't have very concrete goals like that. Uh, we're more just trying to uh, get our prototyping really dialed in right now um, and get a quick turnover to get started on our dev bot because we see that once we get things going with our dev bot, uh, our progress for our competition bot becomes very fast and, and very deliberate. So that's our main priority right now. And one other thing I want to ask you um, is your team has done a decent amount of testing on the LG itself and some of the differences between the, the LG and, and how it goes. And I've even seen like a suction prototype that you even had uh, before as well too. But like, uh, do you have any advice for teams on what you've learned so far with the LG of things that maybe they could approach? Some teams don't have a bunch of game pieces right now, things like that. Like how can they try to do their best in their, their terms of prototyping and testing with some of the variances that you've seen? Um, yeah, so we saw like variances in the like the surface of the of the algae. So there's the one that like first was aware of and posted about like the crosshatch versus um, like the shell design or whatever. Um, and so there's like slight variations in like the the actual material of the rubber and like the color and stuff. Um, so yeah, things like suction cups might not be the greatest idea just because of the variations in um, in the game piece surface. Uh, but we found that for uh, like f like flywheel or like roller intake based subsystems, it's not too much of a concern. Um, so I guess we would recommend that. But whatever works for your team works for your team. Well, a lot of great things have been working for your team over the years. So we can't wait to see uh, what Mechanical Venge continues to bring. Make sure you are following their uh, build blog on Chief Delphi uh, for all the great updates that they have. This is sincerely one of the, the best teams you can follow along with this as well, too. So Mechanical Advantage, good luck. We'll see you back here in just a few weeks. Uh, but, of course, all the great updates on Chief Delphi as well, too. Thanks a lot, guys, and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Thank you. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu first.